Hi, it's Mike Rankin with Relational Advisors, and today we're here with Sam Launder. Sam is a retirement plan analyst for Relational, and in this segment, he's going to talk through how he goes through and uh, uses the SageView advisory platform to build the investment platform for our 401k clients, and I think you're going to really enjoy it. Welcome, Sam. How are you? I'm doing well. Good, good. Yeah. Uh, so Sam is a retirement plan analyst uh, for us here at Relational, and he does all the behind the scenes on the, the 401k business. So in terms of the investment selection and running all of that. So we'll talk to Sam a little bit about uh, what he does. And then we'll talk to Sam a little bit about who he is and what makes him tick and all that kind of good stuff. Let's do it. Uh, so Sam, how long now have you been with us at Relational? So I just passed my second year mark back in October of 2022. So about two and a half years. Nice. Yeah, and it's been it's been very good. Congrats! Yeah. It's been uh, it's been awesome to watch you watch you grow and uh, do everything that you do. So uh, when you're going through and doing like the investment selection, you know, sort of walk me through what does that process look like, and and uh, and how do you how do you do that? Right. So we partner with a company called Sageview Advisory Group, um, and they're a independent um, you know financial advisor on retirement plans. Yep. Um, so we plug into their analytics system essentially and when we get a new client I will go ahead and upload all of their plans information into the SageView system, yep. the SageView platform and every quarter the SageView investment committee, it's a 16 person investment committee, they go through this huge universe of mutual funds yep. and they have a number of different quantitative and qualitative criteria. Yep that they're going to then score those funds on. Yep. And each fund is scored comparatively to the other funds within its own peer sure. group. Right. So there could be, you know, large growth as a group, you know, large blend, um, mid cap and, and, and so on. So there's all these different categories and all of the mutual funds in the universe are, are scored using a number of different quantitative, qualitative criteria and ranked against the others in yep. the peer group. Which, by the way, is hard to say back to back. Right, uh, so the I double give a lot of credit. Yes, the two Qs. Yep. Uh, and then the other thing I should I should add, and and, and I know you brought uh, some of the sample reports, which we can we can look at here if you'd like to uh, uh, get that pulled up. But the uh, what I always find interesting is is that we're really evaluating based on the amount of risk that that manager is taking, and and what is the corresponding return that they're getting, you know, within that category. So right. Uh, so, and yeah, maybe you can just uh, kind of walk us through what, you know, the sample report obviously looks like some small print and a lot of numbers, but maybe uh, if you could simplify that for us. Certainly. Yep. So we have the, this is a, a list of mutual funds here on the left. We have the tickers right next to it. And then across the top, um, you'll notice there's a number of different criteria. So there's total return, um, the 12 month rolling, the R squared. So, so some of these are, are like you mentioned, some of these risk adjusted return mm -hmm. measurements. Um, so there's all of these that are that are ranked. And then there's also a number of qualitative criteria, yep. such as, you know, how long have the fund managers been been working yep. on that fund? What's the turnover in, in the staff there? Um, so all of this kind of comes together to, to form a, a ranking or a mm -hmm. score for each one. Yep. So if we're looking here across the top, we have a number of these different um, risk adjusted return measurements. Um, and each one gets gets a ranking. So they're percentile rankings. Mm -hmm. And essentially, the lower the score, the better. Like golf. Like golf, right. exactly. So let's say it's, you know, let's say one of the numbers here, this, this first one under total return composite ranking for mm -hmm. the Destinations International Equity Fund. Yep. That's a 51 percentile. So that's mm -hmm. in the top 51 percent as compared to that that uh, criteria in, in the peer group of, yep. of, that, um, of that fund. And then along the top, we keep going, and, the, and there's you know, some of these more, more um, quantitative criteria. So we have alpha, we have up capture. So how much of the up market are they capturing? We have down capture. How much of the down market are they capturing? And each of these is given a score. And then over on the right, we have the SageView normalized ranking. So that takes right. into account all of these different numbers all of these different rankings and it produces a total ranking for that for that fund and that's what i like is over on that right hand column right uh, so we could get lost in the in the in the weeds there but to me okay what's the number 
lower is better. Right. And then the associated color, right? We yep. all know green, yellow, and red. It makes it makes it very simple. So so what happens then when a, a fund is let's say in the in the yellow or or you know, heaven forbid the red? Yeah, so so when a fund is in the yellow, that means it's in the third quartile. Mm -hmm. So in fifty percent to seventy five percent. Yep. And then if it's in the red, it's in the fourth quartile. Right. So seventy five to a hundred. No bueno. So no bueno as far as the fourth quartile. If it's gonna fall in the fourth quartile, we're likely gonna look for a recommendation to replace it immediately. Yep. Right. If it's in the third quartile, then what we'll do is we could take a look at kind of the historical numbers here. Mm -hmm. So this is another piece we get through the Sageview reports. Mm. And it provides us with about two years of history right. where this fund has scored. Yes. Um, and we can kind of see if there's a pattern, if there's a bumping trend. Bumping up and down, right. Right. So let's take a look. Um, again, here's that destinations international equity. So, you know, back in 2020, this was in the fourth quartile and then, you know, stayed in the third quartile for, for a few quarters. Yep. Um, so essentially it's bouncing between the third and the fourth, mm -hmm. which if if it's in the third for two to three, we'd likely replace it. Yep. And in this case, it's it's been there for almost two years. Right. So this is a fund that we would take a look at and be like, we need to find a replacement, right. um, and, and we would move that out of the plan. Yeah. And what I've noticed uh, <clears throat> in working with you is when we have a, a potentially a new a new customer coming to us saying, hey, would you take a look at these? We It often looks like this, where, yeah, there's green, but there's also some yellow and red. Uh, and then once we go through and we get everything cleaned up, you know, typically we'll see it's primarily green, uh, maybe a yellow here and there. So we're really able to isolate and, and focus on those one or two funds that need a lot more attention. And of course, you know, the index funds, which are, are passively managed, uh, that's all really about expenses and how you know, closely they're tracking the index. In the case of these actively managed, that's really where this, uh, this risk adjusted return uh, measurements uh, become really important. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, got it. Awesome. And so in, in doing that, like when you think about your, your role here, uh, what is it that, you know, when you go through and you look back over a week or a month or a, or a quarter and you say, ah, that was good. We did some good work there. What are, what are some examples of uh, accomplishments that you've, you know, been happy with over the last uh, year or two? I mean, the, the first one you kind of just mentioned. So when we take over a new client, typically the reports look like this when we first enter all their information. Yeah. So it's a lot of funds that are underperforming and typically the clients aren't are notified about that you know previously they're not they're not aware that this is the this is the situation with their plan um, so it's it's satisfying to kind of get in there and replace all these funds that are scoring poorly um, and get get them replaced with some with some funds that we think are you know better yeah. for the better for the employees yeah for sure so that would be one of them another one would be employee education mm -hmm. so we do employee education meetings um, you know when we first take over a plan but also along the way right yep. So it's, it's really good to get in, um, whether it's in person, it can be on Zoom if, if the client prefers. Um, and we'll kind of go over, you know, some of the basic highlights of mm -hmm. the plan. Yep. Um, kind of reiterate, you know, the match percentage that, you know, this employer has, um, what kind of contributions traditional and Roth are, are being a, um, allowed in the plan. Um, but then we'll also get into some market updates, um, right. what's going on in, in, in the markets. Um, a lot of the times participants are curious about a specific sector, you know, whether it be crypto or, mm. or, or whatever the case may be. And, right. and we can kind of come in and provide them with our, our expertise on, on some of those subjects. Um, mm. So it's A, you know, talking about their plan mm -hmm. and then B, also discussing, you know, what's happening in the financial circles and what does that mean for, for you as a retirement participant. And I always, re I always reflect back to when you say crypto, that we had that meeting and it was probably... Uh, I don't know, Q4 of, of, of 21, or it was at some point where the, you know, Bitcoin was high flying and everybody was all, you know, excited about that. And one particular participant was upset that we didn't have crypto options in the 401k and basically was betting the farm on it. And, and so we kind of had to take a step back and, and again, put it in context of, you know, that, that is really, you know, just purely speculation, right? right. Uh, and so if you want to do that with, uh, you know, 
with a few bucks, that's one thing, but you would not put all of your retirement assets into that. And, and obviously sitting here now, you, we can see that, you know, that, that sector was largely decimated, although Bitcoin has come back a little bit, uh, although we're not recommending that for sure. Um, so yeah, it, 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 what I really like about it and, and the educational sessions is where we can kind of, um, let's say, come off the 401k script a little bit and just talk about real world, about what's happening and, and the order of priority of, of investing and uh, you know debt management and avoiding credit card debt and all those really, really important things. Um, but I don't know why, Sam, whenever we're talking about this, I, 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 I think back to our, uh, our conference in, in Denver. And, uh, and so what, what a lot of people don't know about Sam is that he, uh, he's kind of a renaissance man. Uh, he likes his music. And, uh, and, uh, and so tell me about your, uh, your piano playing. Yeah, so I, I started playing like classical piano when I was a little kid. Um, my parents bought me a keyboard and got me an instructor. And maybe I played for three or four years and then kind of just fell out of love with it. And it was something where I was not being forced to do it, but my parents were sure. like, oh, let's, let's see if he wants to do an yep. instrument. And at a certain point, I was over the practicing, and, and it also just wasn't my style of music that my professor was sure, uh, right. you know, an expert in. Right. Um, and then about a year and a half ago, I, 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 moved, I moved into a house with some roommates, and one of my roommates had this keyboard, and he'd been playing for a couple of years, and so I've kind of rekindled, rekindled the piano playing, which, is, which has been very cool. And, and when you're doing it yourself, you're able to learn what you want to learn, sure, right. learn at your own pace. You yeah. can use YouTube to basically right. learn any song you want. Yep. Um, so it's, it's been fun for the last year and a half, kind of getting back into the, right. the music thing. It's funny what a little self-motivation does uh, yeah. to anything, yeah. right? Whether it's uh, you know work or working out or, or piano or extracurricular or whatever, when someone else is telling you that you need to do it, right. eh, maybe, maybe not, but yep. uh, that's awesome. All right. Well, Sam, thank you very much. I really appreciate it. And, uh, you know, what, what I think you bring to the table for relational and our clients is, is awesome.